Welcome to Home Renovation, the YouTube channel that's designed to help homeowners do DIY projects and renovate their homes and get professional results. Today, we are talking about tiling your bathroom shower. Now, this is a really popular DIY project, but there are a lot of people doing it wrong. And you have to be careful because if you're going to do a tile job in your home and you don't get a professional finish, it's going to show when you go to sell your house and it's going to affect the value of your home. So stay with us today. We're going to show you how to do it and do it right. Now, you know that I'm a firm believer that the best contractor you can have in your house is yourself. But this is one of these topics of conversation we need to have because there is information that you're missing if you're just going to go and tile your bathroom. And if you're going to start on one side and work your way across, start at the bottom and build up, you're going to tile it wrong. It's not that simple. Bathrooms are unique in design, both in the dimensions of the walls and the fact that we complicate our lives using a variety of different sizes of stone and we complicate our lives with shower niches. So what we're going to follow through today is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to lay out your shower and it's not going to matter what kind of tile you use it's all about in the process. All right so today is about how to organize yourself so that you're going to start in the right place you can finish in the right place and you're going to have beautiful lines and not have a bunch of stupid little slivers laying around or have everything seem like it's sitting to the one side or all on a slope okay so here comes a whole pile of information for you hopefully this will help you with your project at home so that you can have a professional looking shower and you can do it for free all right here we go so this is a pretty basic and normal tile installation we have a tub that's put on a floor and it's a wood frame construction house so the floor is not level you don't want to try to level your tub all right it is a really difficult process you're not going to get the structural support that you want and it's going to cause you difficulty. If your tub is out by more than one degree, then maybe you need to take a look at some leveling solutions before you put the tub in. But in most cases, the tub is never installed level, but the tile needs to be. And this is one of the first secrets. You need to identify the high point on this tub, okay, and the low point on the tub, and realize that you can always cut a little bit off the bottom to make it keep this line level at the top. All right, but what you can't do is you can't stretch the tile. So if you start at the high side and you come across and then you have this huge gap, you're in a lot of trouble and you're not going to get a good look. So here's what we do. First step in doing a good tile job is go out and buy yourself that laser level. Okay, I'm going to put that in the description below. Everybody needs one of these if you're going to renovate at home. This is a must have tool. You get a laser level out and you just screw it to the wall. And then you can have your line to work with the entire time. I like to use mine, actually Max gave me one of his camera stands and so it threads on top and I can raise it up as I'm going through the whole process and keep every one of my lines perfect. It takes all of the guesswork out of what you're doing. And then remember most people, their eyes aren't perfectly balanced. One's higher than the other one. And if you install tile based on what you see, you're most likely always gonna put it on an angle. So. Use a laser level so that everybody who comes in your room is going to see it's perfect. Next, when you build your niche, you need to take your tile, and in this case we have a 4 by 16 and you need to think about where the niche goes in advance. You can't just cut it out into the wall and put the hole where you think it's comfortable, it's going to look good. It has to be where the tile finishes and where the tile line starts. Okay? And this is something that you have to measure out. Now we've got a video that explains how to do this really well. So we're gonna have a link at the description below. And remember, the most important process here is pick your tile first before you build your bathroom. All right, you need to have your tile on hand so that you can measure out how tall it is from the tub to the niche before you build your niche so that your lines line up where they need to be. Whether it's gonna be a, a four by 16 like this, so I got a 20 inch to the top and then another 16 inches to here, or if you have a different size stone, you've got to sort that out in advance so that you can finish right on these lines and these lines will connect and be very continuous. You're not going to get slivers. Slivers are the enemy, okay? So whenever you're tiling and you get slivers, which are little thin pieces in either direction, that's a sure tell tail sign that someone's done something wrong. So we need to avoid that. Now, once you've got your niche set up and cut out and waterproofed and you're all ready to go, 
Now you have to take into account the dimension of your stone. And there are really only two ways to do this. You have to set up a center line on your wall. And you're either going to start with your stone center of the stone on the center line, or you're going to start with a grout on the center line. Now in this case, we're going with a half offset, which means we're going like this. So no matter what stone we start with, the next row is going to be the exact opposite. So this is not a concern. If you're doing stack stone, then it becomes really crucial, okay, to make sure that you get that perfect. So all you do is you set up your center line here by measuring this out. And I know it's a 60 inch tub with one inch of drywall. So I'm looking at 29 and a half inches is my center line. Okay, draw that on the wall. And the way we do tile layout is actually, it's a physical way we do it. We take our tile and we lay them out. Now, in this case, I have about two inches left over, which will work perfect, all right? The other option is to start right there about a half tile and then I'm going to go like this and then I'm finishing over here with almost a half about an inch shy of a half so now I know that no matter what I'm doing with my design I'm in good shape okay and if I follow that up I'm going to have that situation there and that's going to be perfect so in every situation along this wall I'm not going to get a sliver and the opposite is true here consider what it looks like when you wrap it around the wall. So we'll start off the center line. And of course we're gonna be a little bit short. Now we're gonna be cutting two inches off. We don't wanna start this row with a two inch of cut. That's not a good look. Because it'll be, look like it's almost a full tile, we should start the next tile as a full tile. Okay? Now, here we have the center line of the tub. My, my tile isn't on that center line when I do that. So now I wanna take a look at this. Two tiles is more than I need because I'm also going to have a door casing. Okay? So what we want to do in this case, because we're doing half offset, is we want to move our center line. If you go right on the middle of the tub, it's not enough. It won't make it all the way to the casing of the door. So here, what I'm going to suggest is we're going to go like this. We're going to measure off and put a mark for our door casing. And in this case, we're going to go with two and an eighth. It's a very standard building casing. If yours is bigger, then make that mark. Now we're going to measure from here to that mark. It's 32 inches. So 16 is actually the middle. Okay, right here. And we're going to use that as our center line on this wall. And on the other side, we'll do something very similar but we're going to be allowed to go a little bit further, okay? So we can go with a full tile and half tile over here. And the way we're going to do that on this side, just to keep things simple so we don't have so much cutting, is we will lay out two full tiles, okay? And then we will just go with a half tile, full tile, half tile, and we'll use a decorative edge. That's it. So this side, we don't have to do any configuring at all. It doesn't matter if our grout line here is a little bit different than the other side because they are on opposite walls, okay? So you're gonna be fine. So now we've got a configuration. Use the center line approach whenever you're wondering if you're gonna have issues because, like I said here, that's my tile. I'm gonna have cut off over here every single time on the left side only. And over here, I'm gonna be building with full tile, half tile, and that will keep things nice and clean and simple. And it'll all look amazing. Whew. So once you've got your configuration worked out and you're happy with where you're starting and stopping and you know how you're going to finish, now it's time to start setting your tile. And the way we do that is we take our laser level and we check all our corners for the high and low point. And here we are looking at three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths. Oh, I've got to move so I can see my laser. Three and three quarters. And then a little bit shorter than that, this wall. Okay, three and a half over here. So that means that this wall and this, the beginning of this wall are the same height. That's my low side. So this is where I'm gonna start tiling. Okay, and then I'm going to grind the bottom of these tiles to fit all the way around. 
knowing that I'm going to finish it with a silicone, if you're grinding off an eighth to a quarter or three eighths of tile, okay, you're not going to notice that visually when you're finished. That's not a concern. What you will notice when you're finished is if you start on the high side and you end up with a three eighths grout line over here, because then you're going to have to use a massive amount of silicone to close that gap or you're gonna see silicone and grout, and that will just look ridiculous. So here we go. Now we've got all that sorted out. Remember, once you get the first line done, the rest of it, it's just Lego, okay? So it's all about taking your time and being patient, sorting out all your details before you start, and then you won't run into trouble once you start mixing cement and putting it on the wall. All right, so instead of just leaving you with the information on how to lay it out and then letting you figure it all out on your own from there, we're gonna do the first row and demonstrate the process that you're gonna have to go through. Like I said, once you get the first row down, the rest of it's just like Lego and it's rather simple. Now, um, many of you know, I do a lot of shopping at the Home Depot, not because we're sponsored, but because it's close. <laughs> and I've gotten spoiled with it. We didn't used to have much competition in Canada until the Lowe's showed up a few years back. So for a lot of years, it's pretty much the only game in town. So I'm going to show you this little clip system. These are some spacers and these are some flat clips that are great for small tile. Okay. There are other clips that have got a curved bottom and they're designed to really move tile around in weird situations. But if you're going to use a leveling clip system from the Home Depot, make sure you get the ones with the flat bottom, not the curved bottom for wall tile, or it will drive you crazy. Now I'm going to just, before I get the cement on, I want to show you this. When I hold this tile flat against the wall, and then I come in contact with the tub, and then I let go, you'll see that it falls. Okay? Because the back of these tubs, they have this little scoop curve. They can be a little maddening. So if you have access to the MapEye Eye Ultralight Cement or some other lightweight compound, or something that'll bond to the waterproofing membrane that we rolled on, will hold the tile to the wall so it doesn't slip. That'll really be helpful. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this. Okay. I'm going to need some of these clips now. Now, these clips are big wedges designed to close up all the, the tile lippage, okay, when you're installing wall tile. But you'll see the very end here is very thin and it has a flat section. And that can be used just down here to make sure that everything doesn't come in contact with the tub. Because there's this scoop, we have a little bit of flexibility. But you'll notice my line doesn't have to be on the edge. It's just there as a visual aid, really. And now I've got a 16th here and a little bit more here. So I want to just slowly push down on this side until I get that scoop happening and lift up this side a little bit until my line is very consistent across that tile. Okay, now I love it. Now, because it's sensitive and because of the scoop, what I'm gonna suggest is you tile the first row and if you don't have an ultralight cement that'll hold the tile in place, then let it dry overnight before you come back and build the rest of the shower. Once you've got your first row all perfectly level, let the cement set up and bond so that you can build on a nice level surface, then you're not gonna run into problems later. All you need to do is take your little clips, knowing that you're half offset, put one just to the each side of the center line, so that when you come back tomorrow, your clips are in place. There we go. And we'll just do that on every one of our, our tiles until the whole first row is done, and then we're good to go. This one, is short. I need it cut. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Your best to be as accurate as you can with the limitation. Maybe the wall, maybe part of the tub, depending on the situation here. So pay attention to what you're coming running into. And then remember, you have mercy. You've got the thickness of the tile on the other side plus cement that'll be built out. So if this is the actual, you actually want to cut just a little bit more off. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of mercy there. Now, on the other side, by the way, it's really handy to have somebody around who can do all your cutting for you. <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna see if, because of that scoop on the tub, 
if I'm going to be able to get this one installed at all. I think I'm going to be able to make that work. Okay, so I have just enough mercy. I'm going to be able to tile this one as well without cutting. Now, if you wanted to see my cutting process, you're going to have to watch another video for that. I'm a big believer in using a grinder and a simple scratch tool. All right. So before we set our tiles into place, we're going to put our clips on. Remember, you're putting the clip in position so that when I put my next row on, it'll pick that up. Now you see how off it is? Look how crooked that is. All right. This is where these little yellow things come in so handy. Whoa. All right. There we go. It's a very consistent line now. That's a good point. So my son who's doing my cutting for me today asked if he could use the Sharpie instead of my black markers from Milwaukee. I'm like, it doesn't really matter the brand. They're both permanent markers. But you see, this is a glazed tile, so it comes right off. So if you have a glazed wall tile, which you probably should in a shower anyway, this is great because you can make a mark. Now that's not gonna wash off on a wet saw very easily. And it's really easy to read versus trying to put a pencil line on that. That's why I like using these. These are great. Okay, so he's cutting that tile. We've already decided that we're going to be going full tile over here as well. So I'll get started with that one. And you can see that this doesn't really take a whole lot of time. Even when the tub is not, tub is not level, it's not a huge process to go through this. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not worried about cement down here, it's because I don't need to be concerned about putting cement where the tile flange is. It's so recessed. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finishing that one off with a silicone anyway. We'll just leave that there for now until the other tile gets in place. But what I am going to do is use this. Yeah, that'll be good. We're gonna measure our cut. Oh, you gotta be ridiculously. You gotta be joking me. <laughs> it's exact, right to my two and an eighth line. That is crazy. We got that one cut now? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, the only trick you have to remember here, folks, is keep the cut line in behind the closed joint. Don't make that mistake and have that showing. Okay, here we go. Now we got the cut line going into the corner. We're gonna get our spacers in before we press it to the wall too tightly. Remember, because there's a half tile on the next row, you're gonna to need to put a spacer for the other side of that tile as well. Same thing here. This tile is gonna be a half tile. So it needs two and then one more to pick up the full tile that goes there. Whew. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's just double check this with a 16th grout line. Wow, that is awesome. No, that doesn't happen every day, but when it happens, it feels good. Because <laughs> now I know that I can use half tile all the way up that wall. And so I can set my cutter off and say, go make 10 tiles cut in half, because I know we're going to need them exactly like that. All right, here we go. And we're just using a little bit of space just to get it off the tub. And there is a practical reason for this, all right? I'm not just doing it to level. I'm using these spacers as well because 
acrylic tubs that you're going to be buying out there today, when you fill them full of water, there's a lot of deflection. They move, okay? And you don't want your tile sitting directly on it or it will squeak as people get in and out of the tub. Now remember, this is going to be a half tile here. I'm going to need to get that spacer in there as well. All right. Now it was a great time to go around and make sure everything is just the way you want it. This is the time to be picky, folks. All right. I'm not happy with the way that this is sitting. Woo! Now we got to come around the other side. So here we go. Now we got a screw and then wall board. So let's make sure that we measure, we measure to the screw. There we go. Maddie. <laughs> when I put my tile right on the tub, see my mark? It hits that tub, the tile. Like what's happening as I go to the back? That's a lot higher than what I want it. Okay. So what I know is I'm going to need a little bit of grinding work done here. And we use a four inch grinder with a continuous rim blade that just chews through this stuff like butter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take into account that I'm taking that extra eighth off and I'm going to go from that down to zero just by turning my wrist and creating nothing to it. All right. We're going to start with that. Cut that, grind that, and then we will stick that one in. So how would the homeowner do that though? All right, so my son just told me, well, all right, way to show them the technique that takes years of practice. So, <laughs> or you can just measure, you know, your 3 16th to zero, and you can take another tile and line it up. And I'm pretty sure most homeowners are smart enough to figure this one out, but you can just use that as your, get the same result. It's a little bit straighter too. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I'm the kidding. line's a lot straighter than you're cutting. Well, <laughs> right, I gotta get rid of all this black crap out there. I mean, it rubs off, Max, but usually it takes a little bit of your skin with it, right? All right. <laughs> moment of truth. All right. Here comes the moment of truth. So we've got our end cut and our slope cut into this. Now, you will see that this tile, we cut off a little bit more than we needed to. That's not a concern because the amount that I cut is actually um, equivalent to the size of the bead of the silicone joint that I'm going to be using. And that's why it's always a safe place to start. If you go with a 3 16 cut to maybe a quarter, when you know you're going to have an issue, you'll always be fine. Now, here we go. Now this is where the trick comes in because this little spacer, it has steps on it. Okay. See those ridges. And the way it works is you put it underneath and you're on the flat spot. But when you start turning it left, every time you hit another step, it raises the edge of that tile. Okay. And it sits there. Now it's actually too tall right now. So, that gap is going to be easily covered with silicone. So I know this tile is going to install just fine. Some cement. Well, here's your option, right? You either cut the bottom of the tub to make your first row of tile level so that your niche can be installed level, or you've got to wait to cut your niche in until after you've started installing your stone and then match this being crooked as well. <laughs> It's funny because even though it's just a little bit crooked, it really shows. There's something about things that just aren't level that they just scream at you. Okay. Now, back to our program. We need one here, one there, and one in the corner. Okay. And for anybody who's watching this and you're not familiar with this kind of leveling system, this just sits here. And when when everything is done and dry, it just, it breaks right off. It literally stays in behind the wall. But what this does is you use these same yellow clips there. 
and you cause compression to pull everything nice and tight. That's the whole point of that system. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is leave this installed just temporarily and you'll see visually. Visually this, uh, this, this looks okay. But when this corner is raised up to where it should be, everything is going to look amazing. There we are. This corner needs just a little touch. There we go. Now that is perfect. The back of this tub is actually not level either. So this corner is actually higher than this corner. Very interesting. So that means that in this corner, we're going to need to take out that 3 16 And then on the other side, we're going to go up to a full quarter. So we're going to just do this little trick that I showed you. <laughs> we're going to have my boy grind that out. I'm going to just mark where the red line is and bring it over here. Translate, see how much taller it is? It's another eighth taller. So what I'll do is I'll just take this line. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to line up my marker with my bent wrist. And then I'm going to straighten my wrist as I come across. There's my line. There's my angle. Okay. Now, one more thing to consider here, and that is the edge of the tub. When I come across, I'm going to line up my spaces. I don't want to just cut all the way across. I have to stop at the edge of this tub. Okay. All right. Take a quick second and rub all the extra off. This is just to communicate with my cutter. Okay. And he's been with me on enough of these jobs. He knows that that's going to be the edge of the tub. <laughs> so I can just give him both of these. And they'll come back finished and we'll finish the video. One of the things that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using a, uh, an edging on the tile. So what I do, take my knife and I'm just going to clean the cement off the back of that tile. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of the cement there. Because my tile edge has a, a piece that slides in behind, it's about an inch. So you want to just clean the cement from behind the tile. And if you're smart enough to think in advance, don't add it in the first place. <laughs> now that is all we can do today. All right. We do not want to start building on this tile because the cement will not hold the weight and it'll all start to slope into the tub and your lines will go to disaster. Be patient and do yourself a favor. Don't run forward thinking you're saving yourself time and energy because you'll be ripping it all off the wall tomorrow morning. Now, if you'd like to see how this project turns out, Check out the link at the end of the video for our Reality Renovation episode. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And by all means, hit that little bell icon. It'll give a little exclamation marks and it'll tell you, yes, you'll be notified of every time a video comes out from us, which is every week, Saturday night at 9. And we throw in a few extras now and again too. Don't forget to add your questions in the comment section below. I'm a little crazy, but I still answer those every single day. We're here to help. We want to see you succeed. Click the video to see how this project turned out.